There we are. Good evening. It's good to have the community of faith alive and well and up and moving. Makes you want to sing the old cathedral song, moving, moving. Well, you had to bend there. It was really cool. It's quite an experience, actually. So, welcome, guys. Tonight's the night. No matter what else has happened today, tonight is the night. <laughs> All right. Thank God for good meals out with the hubby. And that means you're out somewhere in Michigan. That is an awesome deal. Now wait a wait a minute before you before you sign off, Tisha, you gotta see this. I got my shirt today. It says pray for our country. I like that. This is the guy that's doing hashtag. This is the guy that's doing hashtag believers challenge. And um, when he saw we were doing it, he sent he sent us these shirts. Yeah, another T-shirt, a black and white one for all my biker friends and anybody else that likes black and white. And so if you want one of these, you can get them. It's a simple stipulation. Pray for the nation. Take a picture of yourself, make a video, put it on Facebook and tell everybody, pray for the nation till we flood it. His statement is, until we start a revival. Yes, love. Oh, yeah, green and gray, too. Hey, Jeff Tomlin, welcome. Laura Perot, welcome. Shannon Tony, welcome. The gang's here. Somebody start singing. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Robert Molderman. When the saints come marching in. Oh, yeah, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. There you go. Here we go. Oh, hang on. I got to get the right screen. Hold on just a second. No, kid, do we have an, um, this is the other colors. You got a green one and yeah. a gray one. All right. It's kind of the dark khaki green. Kind of like an army green here. Yeah, yeah, army green. And um, here's the thing. This guy will send it to you if you'll get involved and help him on his mission. And that is... Hashtag Believers Challenge. So I encourage you, go take a look at it. One of the versateers, Aunt Terry, welcome. We'll put that in there. We've got our own Believers Challenge going on here. And uh, it's because our Believers Challenge coincided with his hashtag that we got to see each other, meet each other, and we like, hey, we might as well come alongside of each other because our missions stand Hand in hand with with each other, Tisha. How about the how about your friend with the kidney stones? This is how I fight my battle. Amen. I guess we're gonna have to sing that song tonight, aren't we? <laughs> so, brother Jeff Jeff Tomlin, welcome, sir. It's good to have you. This is guys. My friend Jeff Tomlin's here with me. Jeff was actually my roommate at Mount Carmel for. I don't know, brother, how many years? Four years? And then KMBI? Not quite. I don't, I don't remember. I think, I think we were roommates the whole time. Jeff was the guy that was in the room the day the lightning struck. That's the guy right there. Good, good friend, good brother. I call you blessed, sir. It's good to have you with us. Stick around. I want you to do the same thing I'm doing in your group. We're looking for a thousand people. And guess what, Jeff? You're one of them. Be number one. It'll do it just like us. 
you do your thing your way, but I'm going to tell you, I got a lot of secrets how to make this happen. And I know you want them, and I know you'll be a blessing to your people. He's a, he's a pastor at his church, and we bless them. Father, I bless Jeff and Debbie. We bless the ministry. Some reason I'm not getting the name of that right now, but I'll get it. We bless Jeff and Debbie right now. We bless the work they do in the ministry. Bring gold church. We bless them in the name of Jesus and declare the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow with it in the mighty name of Jesus and the mighty name of Jesus and the mighty name of Jesus. <laughs> hey, I never, I never saw these amazing pictures you had here, Jeff. I'll come by tonight and, um, snag them from you. Now that's some pictures. <laughs> if you could, if you only knew the stories behind all these pictures I was seeing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, well, anyways, uh, I'll get back to the show now. I'm over on Jeff's page, just having a good old time. Christine Barkley, welcome. And uh, Donna K. Woodward Hayes. Another one of our Williston friends. Come on over. Come on over. Come on over. Uh, we're going to have roast tomorrow. We, we want you to be here with us. Come on over. 11 o'clock. We're going to have a Bible study. and We want you with us. Come on over, Donna. Look at this group of people. we, Brother Mike, look at this group of people we got here tonight. Mike and Shannon, Titian, Brother Jeff, Loretta's here. Robert Mulderman, Teresa, Aunt Terry's here. Christine Barkley, Donna Woodward's here. Come on, somebody sing a little louder. When the saints come marching in. Oh, when the saints come marching in. Oh, yeah, I know. I'll be in that number, number one. When the saints go marching in. Woo! Come on, give me some trumpets and trombones. <laughs> hey guys, it's Saturday Night Live here on Community of Faith. So, you better hang on to your hat band and on to your... Uh, all the rest of that, whatever they say that stuff for, because tonight's going to be an awesome, 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 awesome night. And uh, you don't want to miss being here. Wow, that's cool, Christine. Wow, best friend from junior high school. Wow, but you're late, so you go to the back of the, the line now, and you get the last piece of apple pie. <laughs> The cool thing about our apple pie is whether you get the first piece or the last. You don't gain no weight. <laughs> and there you go. Brother Mike's got the band all tuned up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you had a beautiful day. It was an absolutely amazing day here in North Dakota. Yes, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All the way from breakfast with Brother Tim and Brother John and communion at the restaurant. Come on now. And then here we are, noon program, noon prayer, and now here you and I are today. I'll tell you, I really, I really appreciate you guys' help. Jamie Dugan, come on, man. Alejandro, Woo! we done got a crowd of folks tonight. We got it all. Brother Jamie, where you are, man? Please tell me you're in Williston, getting ready to come over for a while tonight. We'll leave the door unlocked. We'll leave the door unlocked and we'll even make you, you know, a fried egg or something. 
<laughs> no, we'll make you some zucchini. <laughs> we'll make you some zucchini because we got a bunch of zucchini left from Michigan all the way in North Dakota, and we gave it out all the way here. Well, it's all right. You know, what's cool is, look at this. It's 15 minutes after and everybody's here. Now, if you're new to us, hang, hang out a little bit because we're going to be doing communion here. And we want you to receive communion with us. It was really cool taking communion today in a restaurant. Reminded me of old times because took communion in a lot of restaurants and bars. I'm home in fire stricken Washington. Wow, that's true. Are they? Well, that's it don't matter where they are. Everybody stop. Let's pray right now. In the name of Jesus. We need rain. Not torrential. Gentle, soaking, fire quenching rain. Now, fire stop in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I know by my natural man that as long as there's fuel, fire keeps going. Because the word of God says where there is no fuel, the fire goes out. So in the name of Jesus, rain happened. May they say it's the most unusual rain we've ever seen. We speak it now. The community of faith speaks against this fire situation now. And we declare fire go out in the name of Jesus. May that gentle soaking range spread all the way across the northwest, the northern plains, and every place there's a fire. Put it out now in the name of Jesus. Angels of the Lord. You're the best fire stompers there ever was because you got in there with the children, the three Hebrews, and you danced around in the fire with them in Jesus. And we declare fire go out now in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. It is done. Amen. It is it done. done. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Well, anyways, back to the communion. We want you to take communion with us. It doesn't matter who you are. Please stay with us and take communion. Get some bread and get some water. And, and I'm going to ask some of you because you can't study right now. Just trust me. Please trust us. There's no place in the Bible that says you got to be in church or with the bishop to take it. The most important thing is you got to be right with God. And we'll lead you into prayer so you're right with God in a matter of about a minute and a half. Dr. Reverend Sweeney's here. Three cheers for the Sweeney's. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip, hip hippies. Hip, hooray. Couple of hippies. Hooray. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you. Thank you for your prayers today, guys. We felt them prayers kick in immediately. And, um. That's a very, very amazing, wonderful thing to know that we got this group of prayers, pray, uh, prayer warriors praying with us every single day. And uh, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you. If we ask nicely enough, Brother Tim might sing for us again tonight. Or maybe one of you that want to call in and sing. Um, we'll have a good time with that here in just a little bit. Now, if you don't know what the back row is, the back pew is a group of people here that like to sit in the back pew. But it's because they, um, they got Twinkies back there and ice cream back there and um, cappuccinos back there. I think somebody said they had some foot-long hot dogs back there tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, it's a great time. And they seem to get a lot out of the preaching being way back there. <laughs> now, I, it's an interesting thing because in Bible school, we said you wanted to be underneath the spout where the glory came out. But they're in the back. <laughs> they're even raising their hands. <laughs> Nachos. <laughs> Dr. Pepper milkshake tonight. See, they look at they came prepared. They came prepared. 
And I got a nice cup of water. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Well, thanks for being here, guys. And, um, you know, tell all your friends. It's the greatest place in the world to receive communion. We've had whole families receive their first communion right here. And um, what a blessing it is to people. And what a blessing it is. Um, in Jesus' mighty name. Well, it is now 20 after. And it's time for us to stand. What is it? Bacon donuts. Did he say bacon donuts? All right. Love you, Donna. Thanks for being around with us. Bacon donuts tonight. Dr. Pepper milkshake. Nachos and s'mores. Now, you guys are all fooling around. And Robert Mulderman's praying an amazing prayer. Now, pay attention here. <laughs> Get him, Robert. May the fires be extinguished by the almighty rain from the almighty Father and free these brothers and sisters from the anguish they are experiencing. That's a powerful prayer. And look it. Look it. I don't see any of the back pewers have liked it yet. Can you believe that? They're still eating their shakes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get with us in a minute. <laughs> you know, I, I love this group. I love this this community of faith family because um, we stick together. We're crazy together. <laughs> we're but wait, we're students together. That's a good thing, and um. We're, we're also um, brothers and sisters together. And when you're fighting, we're fighting. It's all right, man. I got a white man. Do <laughs> I have Ritz crackers and peppermint tea? Come on, brother. You, you, you're a part of them. Put a little of that spray cheese on there. You'll fit right in the back pew there. <laughs> now, uh, just in case you haven't looked yet, uh, Leanne did get up the pictures from our, the trip to Michigan when we were with all you guys. So get in there and see them. And if you got pictures in there you don't like, uh, too bad. They're up and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I still get two baptisms. For some reason... We're having trouble getting the two baptisms put on there for whatever reason. Who knows? But, um, you know, it'll be there. But most of all, you got some pictures. You can see everybody else and um, kind of enjoy the family here. You know, I think it's amazing. The family that God is building here in this community of faith. Now, I'm not your mama or your papa, but um, I am your brother. I am your brother, and uh, you are my sister, and thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for standing together. We're, 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 changing. we're changing our world for good, guys, and be strong in the Lord and the power of might. Now, one more thing. Be watching tomorrow night because I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a watch party with Bishop Tudor Bismarck tomorrow night. At 6 p.m. And, um, okay, Julian and Vamala's here. Man, they're on their way to church. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. They're on their way to church. We got to get get ourselves busy here. Um, So tomorrow night, let's see, tomorrow night, Sunday night, it's 13 September at 1800 hours, 6 o'clock p.m. Central. Ooh, that's a lot to say. I'm going to post a watch party for Bishop Tudor Bismarck from the Faith Conference, uh, Dr. Winston's International Faith Conference. I want you to be there with me in that watch party. May our watch party have 15, 20, 100, 150 of us there. Um, it's going to be a message that you're going to get up and run around the room just a couple times when you sit there and listen to him, because the man is one serious preaching 
machine. And I can only imagine how serious he is against this whole mess that's been going on. And I'm going to tell you, God gives this man a word that will revolutionize your life. And uh, I want you to be there. Now, Sister Shannon posted a new song for worship. We are family. I got all my family with me. We are family. Get up, everybody, and sing. <laughs> Something. Church at home at 10 a.m. It's 13 hours from now, so you're at 8. Oh, you got a little time. All right. Church at home at 10 a.m. All right. All right, all right, all right. Well, it is now time for us to rise and um, make the Pledge of Allegiance and have a moment of silence and then sing God Bless America. And uh, when we get finished with that, we'll be receiving communion. Here we go. Join with me. Am I on the right screen? Got the right screen happening? Always look to adjust the camera a little bit. This folded flag is from... Uh, oh, Jesus. Kenneth Welch. Uh, our, dear, our dear friend, Brother Mike Welch's brother, was killed in action in uh, the... Uh, in Lebanon at the bombing of the embassy. And so it's in honor of him that we do this every night. And um, now, if you will, render your honor and let's make our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all and now we will have a moment of silence as we remember those who are missing in action and still serving today this moment of act this moment of silence honors their selfless service honors the service of our veterans all through the years the families that stood with them and though the lives of those who have forever been altered in their body, their spirit, and their soul. It is not only fitting and proper that during a moment of silence, you stand silently with your hand over your heart, your head bowed, say a prayer for the families who support these and those who've given their lives. But also, this moment of silence will last for 21 seconds in honor of the 21 rifle volleys fired at the funeral of a fallen soldier. This moment of silence begins now. And now, if you will, join me in singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home.
Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Here we are tonight. The land of the free because of the brave. On this night, Brother Mike Tony, Brother Robert Mulderman, Brother Jamie, all have served, defended this nation, put their life on the line. We, the American people today, say thank you. And we thank you, Father, that all through history, when the call of duty came, men and women answered that call and said, here am I, send me. And on this day, we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. Now, Father, all across this nation today, people prayed. All across this nation today, people got out and they were actively doing what it takes to make America the nation that you designed it to be. And now, Lord, we add our faith, we add our prayers, we add our pledge of allegiance, and we declare as those who are truly in authority on this earth, we declare we are the mighty, awesome body of Jesus Christ. We are, we the people. This nation was created for us. And as, and as our great documents, all of them, have established the truth for all of these years, we declare today liberty and justice for all in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that your hand of vengeance is strong against the enemies who have tried to destroy our nation with corruption and with isms from around the world. We have bound those isms and we have stood against them every day, six days a week since, the, since March. We know our prayers are heard in heaven. Yeah. And we know America has changed because of this group of people right Amen. here. We thank you for it. Thank you for Brother Tanvir and Sister Nassim. Thank you for Julian and Vamala praying with us. Our friends in Australia and Africa and South America. Our, our friends in Europe and Asia. All around the world that we know are praying, we bless them for their prayers and we receive their prayers and we know that you have heard our prayer and we know we have the petition that we have asked of you and that is God bless America, the land of the free because of the brave. We think about Abraham Lincoln's statement. Help us the living to be dedicated to this same force that these gave their life for. Help us that we raise our level of devotion as they gave that last full measure of devotion. And we highly resolve that they have not fallen in vain and that this nation under God, is experiencing a new birth of freedom right here, right now, today, September the 12th, 2020. And this nation will always be one nation under God. Long may this land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us, Lord, by thy great might. Great God, our King, we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. In the name of Jesus. Sister Loretta, we thank you for your prayer request. Brother Mike, thank you for helping us with that. I appreciate that pin because that puts it right there for me to see. You heard from God, my brother. Thank you. Let's pray right now. Lord, we don't know Loretta's life, but you know every minute of it. You've not missed one second of it. And our sisters come and said, I don't know what's going on. 
but it's not like me. Now, Lord, if you've put something on the inside of her to deal with in the realm of the spirit, then we say she'll deal with it. However, we also say that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, rules her heart and her mind now, right now. 7.35 p.m. Central Standard Time. And that the peace of God invades Loretta's life. Yeah. If you put a burden, you place an assignment, we know our sister will take it on with great force and strength. But we do it from our position of peace. So I bind this spirit, no matter what you may be that have been around, you are bound and our sister is free. If you've been dealing with one yourself, just take the prayer right now and say, I am free. I am free. I am at peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 So I'm going to give Jesus a high five. In the name of Jesus. Dap him up. Oh, yeah. Might just be where I got the, the camera. All right, here we go. It's time for communion. Thank you for putting the verses up, guys. You know, welcome, Rebecca. It's good to have you with us tonight, every night, all the time. First Corinthians chapter 11. You know, I keep thinking about Doug Older. Welcome, Rebecca Smith. We got us a group of folks here tonight. I love every single one of you guys that's here. And I, whoa, it's not an earthquake. That was me. <laughs> we did it, you Woo! something you're, are you setting up? I'm fired up tonight and it's showing up on the screen right there in front of your eyes. Amen in Jesus mighty name. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 28 and verse 31. Now, I want you to see this. God in one amazing act handed you his whole kingdom. Is that amazing? Wow. You, you alone are worthy, Jesus. You alone are worthy. You alone are Wow. The revelation has been sitting in on me, guys. In one prayer, God gives us the whole kingdom. We have access to it all. Here comes the glory. Hallelujah. Verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you today. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death his redemptive work until he comes. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged of the Lord. Can you imagine Jesus On that last night. And he lifted that cup. For the first time. And he said. I'm I'm going to read it right now. I'm, I'm awestruck right now. I'm awestruck. Jesus lifted that cup. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. I'll go preach it. I'm not going there. I started to turn there, but I'll just preach it. And I can't, I can't, I got to stay focused. Can you see him? He sat there that night saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. Them guys had no idea what he was talking about. But Jesus was starting the New Testament church. Then. Can you see that? I don't know if you guys are, but we're kind of having revival right here, so I hope you get in it. And he went out, surrendered his will, the bloodshed there. They chained him up. The blood was shed there. They took him to Pilate, to the praetorium. They marched him down the streets. They put a crown of thorn on his head. Blood has been shed over your mind to give you mind control. They tied him to the whipping post and beat his back. Blood was shed. It matters not what you may bring up. Our Lord and Savior has already shed blood there once and for all and it's free to you tonight and the glory is in this room isn't it ah wow wow what are what do we do next <laughs> We pray the prayer. Now we're going to pray a prayer of salvation, a prayer of self-examination. This time of prayer is for you to be sure your heart is right with God. Most of you that's with us tonight that I can see already know God. But every night we have people with us who don't know our God. And this prayer if you mean it down here in the depths of your life, it will take you from being a mere earthling to being a child of Almighty God. Please give me the honor of introducing you to our Father.
Let's pray. Say these words after us. Father in Jesus name. Father in Jesus name. I know I need Jesus. I know I need Jesus. In every area of my life. In every area of my life. You sowed him as a seed. You sowed him as a seed. So you could get me. So you could get me. And here I am. Here we are. And we receive you tonight, Jesus. We receive you tonight, Jesus. In every area of our life. In every area of our life. According to John chapter 1. According to John chapter 1. When I receive you. When I receive you. You give me the power. You give me the power. To become a child of God. To become a child of God. And I receive you, Jesus. And I receive you, Jesus. According to John 3, 16. According to John 3, 16. When I believe in you. When I believe in you. I will not perish. I will not perish. I have everlasting life. I have everlasting life. And I believe in you, Jesus. And I believe in you, Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of God. Pray in my heavenly language. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Well, think about it. In that one prayer, you went from darkness to light. You went from sin to Jesus' righteousness. You went from being a mere earthling to the child of Almighty God and a joint heir with our Jesus. One prayer. Your life has changed. Now you need us. You need this community of faith. One of our community of faith family members will put in our my email address, hgpreacherman at gmail.com. And our website address. SamuelJCoddle.com So that if there's any way you need help to walk with God, we'll help you do it. I got, we got believers all over the nation and around the world right here with us tonight. And we will help you walk with God because that's our place on this earth is to help you. What a revelation. That in one prayer, you went from a mere earthling to the child of Almighty God. Because Jesus paid that price. Somebody ought to be shouting glory. And it's all right if you type it in there. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now. The communion prayer is on there if you want to pray that prayer at home. And it's proper for you to do that every day. Here's our tradition. We're going we're gonna to pray over these. Then we're going to pray over the bread and over the juice. And then we're going to sing a couple of songs or hymns or shout glory or whatever God brings us by the Holy Spirit. It's a wonderful time of worship. I encourage every one of you to watch how we do this so you can do it right at your home. And anytime you got a new friend that comes over, just look at him and say, let's take communion together. In Jesus' mighty name. You ready? Let's bless our elements. Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. 
Father, in Jesus' name. I set these elements aside. I set these elements aside. For this time of communion with you. For this time of communion with you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's pray over the bread. You were wounded. You were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgression. And you were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement. The chastisement. For my peace. For my peace. Is on you. Lord. Is on you, Lord. And by your stripes. And by your stripes. I am I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. Nothing missing. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From the body of Christ. From the body of Christ. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you in that garden. You said, if it is possible, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Thank you that you paid the price, Jesus. Now we lift up the cup of blessing. Pray this with me from the depths of your heart. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my father. With you, my father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Is placed in remission. Is placed in remission. And my life. In my life. And I'm a new creation. And I'm a new creation. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. The old things have passed away. And all things have become new. And all things have become new. In my life right now. In my life right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The plague has to pass over. The plague has to pass over. And cannot be on me or my family. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come boldly. I come boldly to the throne room of grace. To the throne room of grace. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. For my assignment every day. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren is cast down. Is cast down. And there's no more condemnation. And there is no more condemnation. In my life. In my life. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. My conscience is purged. My conscience is purged. My robes are made white. My robes are made white. And I will always be. And I will always be. The glorious church. The glorious church. Without spot. Wrinkle or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the juice together. Wow.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing a worship song together. And we'll get to this is how I fight my battles in a minute. I'm just a... <clears throat> I'm just a little overwhelmed at the goodness of our God. Think about young Mary. Sitting there in awe and wonder as that angel's looking her in the eye. Saying, you're going to give birth to the Christ child. She's like every other Jewish girl. Grew up hearing about the Christ. And said, how can this be? And the angel said, with man, it's impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. <laughs> I love Mary. She said, well, then being unto me, she moved immediately. She went from Mary, sweet teenage Mary, to the mother of Jesus in one word. And you just did the same thing when you prayed that prayer. And that's why we pray it every single day. Mary Pastor Rick. Charles Landtrip, welcome, guys. Let's sing, I worship you. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give you praise. For you are my righteousness. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give you praise. For you are my righteousness. I worship you. Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give you praise. For you are my righteousness. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. 
There is none like you. There is none like you. You know, I don't think I know the um, the verses of this, but I'm gonna put these words in so you can sing them with me. You ready? You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You just got to keep singing it, don't you? You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Awesome in this place, You are awesome. Wow. Wow. You know, you prayed that prayer this afternoon, Mike. I want everybody to hear this. I got glory. If you think I'm crying and I'm afraid or something's wrong, it ain't. I got the glory of God all over me. And at, at noon prayer today, I shared with everybody I need a prayer. I really did. I needed the strength of this team. And since you put that prayer in there, Mike, I, I've just been in the presence of God all day. I just been in his presence. I, uh, I'm overwhelmed with the goodness of our God. You could be the worst sinner in the world. And Jesus stood in front of Mary Magdalene and said, Come out, every one of you de devils. I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. And who was the first person Jesus revealed himself to after the resurrection? Mary Magdalene, the woman out of whom he cast seven demons. Why? Because she, she knew where God brought her from.
She knew that chasm of despair that's in the human heart. Bound by seven demons. You might have some problems in your life. But not too many of you were bound by seven demons in one body. But in one act of our Jesus. It's all washed away. It's, it doesn't matter who you are tonight. That's hearing these words. It don't matter. Sinner, saint, rich or poor, young or old, right or left, Democrat, Republican. I said the words right out loud in church. You could even be an independent. God don't care about any of that stuff. He just wants you to receive all of his goodness. <laughs> and, he, and he lifted a cup and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. And it was a cup of grape juice. The poor disciples had no idea what was going on. I love your presence, Jesus. I love your presence, Lord. Lord, we, the community of faith, we love your presence. We love it when the glory comes in the house like this. <laughs> Think about the glory, guys. The glory is in North Dakota. The glory is in Michigan. The glory is in Mississippi and Louisiana. The glory is in Malaysia. The glory is in San Antonio, Texas. Tonight. I don't know where to. Oh, Washington State, brother, brother Jamie's. The glory is in Washington. <laughs> and of all the places, the glory shows up right here on Facebook. Just lift your hands and say, "I just want more of you, Lord." I just want to be like you. I just want to be like you. I got a I got another song. It's a new one. If you watch my page today, just before the show. I put up some worship songs. That's what I was worshiping. This is one of my favorites. I just found this. And we're going to try to sing it. This is my first time I ever trying to sing it in public and lead. I've sang it with Brother... William McDowell many times, but uh, he's an amazing leader. But let's just try this. It's a simple song. You got the words. They're in the comments there. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I want to sing it, Jesus, but you got to make that glory flow a different way. Let's try it again. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. 
I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in. Brother Tim, you know the song? Call in, man. Whew. I give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Whew. <laughs> oh, well, I tried. I told you I would try. I'm going to get this. Here I stand. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hands. Lord, I'm longing to see your desires revealed. In me, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me take my heart take my life as a living sacrifice all my dreams all my plans lord i place them in your hands i give myself away i give myself away so you can use me i give myself away i give myself away so you can use me. Oh my. Where are we at here? My life is not, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own, to you it belongs. I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. Well, thank you guys for helping me sing the song. I think this song is one of our new favorites. It's an amazing song. If you've never heard him sing it, I encourage you when we're done tonight, you can go to my personal Facebook page 
and I've got it up there as a YouTube video. And uh, he sings it for nine minutes. <laughs> I think we got about four out of it. But it's all right. It's one of those songs that comes from the depths of a heart of a person who's been changed forever by our God. I'd say tonight, Gwen's the person I've known the longest of everybody here tonight. But you know why Gwen's here tonight? Because that's always been her. That's always been me. You know why you're here tonight? Because that's who you are. Saturday night, beautiful night. You're here sitting and looking at this crazy screen, watching a, watching a man cry. <laughs> You guys are the most sold out people we know. Thank you. I'll tell you what, Robert. You're another one of those pillars in this place. Nobody may have ever said anything like that to you, but it's the truth. You are a pillar here. Christine Barkley, you're a pillar. You got to start speaking it about yourself. Mary Pastor Rick, you're one of the pillars here. Ain't nobody, ever, maybe nobody ever said that to you guys before. You're a pillars. Pillars. To higher level I tell you what when you get to see God do what he does in the lives of people well Julian and Bamala you guys are pillars here I'm serious about it I'm serious you look at everybody on the list of who's watching right now maybe you guys can't see them I can see them all and Terry and Terry you've been here since the beginning you're a pillar Mike and Shannon. Well, I said Gwen, but Dave's a part of it too. You too, Dave. Brother Dan told me he was going to be with some family and stuff for the next couple days, so he wasn't able to get on, but there's one of them right there. And there's more. They'll come. <laughs> thank you for being a part thank you that we have a kindred spirit thank you I don't know how long my friend Jeff stayed but he's another one that'll probably do just exactly what we're doing right over there where he's at Everybody say it with me. 1,000 community of faith live streams happen on Facebook. <laughs> well, Brother Robert, you're a part of a family that loves every bit of you. I don't know I don't know your story. Yeah, I, so. I don't even know if you got brothers or sisters, but you sure got a bunch here. <laughs> and they're young and old, and they're rich and poor, and they're... We got it all right here. Come on. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. God placed every one of you here on purpose. 
to watch this be established. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, Shannon. <laughs> Do any of you ever go and check out these these hashtags that we put out there? Because I do. And some of them say, there's nothing here to see. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, uh, Sister Shannon said earlier that we had to sing, this is how I fight our battles. So here we go. You ready? Come on, man. Come on. 1,000 more than unbelievable. Amen. Amen, Mike. I'm in agreement with you. Look, at, they can't stop us. They can't. Listen, I got I to gotta tell you something about this. You may not know this. But all you and I got to do is start spending about 20 bucks a week to promote these programs we got. And they ain't never shutting us down because they want our money. The only thing we got to do is figure out the right words to say, and we are unstoppable right here with this number of people. What are we singing, Shannon? God bless your brother Tanvir, Sister Nassim, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Terza, Fadi, and Joy. We love you guys. What are we singing? Oh. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I win my battles. This is how I fight my battles. How I win my battles. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, this is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight our battles. And this is how we fight our battles. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. In heavenly armor we'll enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that fashioned against us can stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, 
honor, power and strength to the Lord, and we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. <laughs> The power of darkness comes in like a flood. The battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of his blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. <clears throat> we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we win our battles. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we win our battles. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Lord, they may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Lord. They may think that I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Well, guys, if I don't stop singing, I'm going to sing all night long. Wait, let's sing one more. Shannon, wait just a second. Just a second. Seems like Shannon was the worship leader tonight. All right, you ready? We are family. I got all my family with me. We are family. Come on, everybody, and sing. Do it again. We are family. I got all my family with me. We are family. Come on, everybody, and sing. All right, well, don't, well, don't get that one started because that one just goes on forever, too. Every morning, I wake up hearing this song in my head, Don't Get Me Started. Which song is it? We'll help you get started every day, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, love. Oh, you looked at me. I thought you was going to say something. All right. Now, let's give you a couple announcements and get everybody focused because I got a good word tonight. I got one of them words that just makes you want to get up and run around, and shout and dance. And this is a good word to get you ready for tomorrow night with, with um, um, Dr. Bishop. Two door. Bismarck. Thank you. Two door Bismarck. And he is from Zimbabwe. Got an amazing, powerful church in Zimbabwe. No matter what everybody wants you to think about Africa, they're not weak, dying, and almost gone. They are a power bunch of group of people over there. And so, um, let's give you some announcements. Now, number one, hey, Renee, welcome, man. We love you. We'll see you guys in the morning, man. Glad to see you here tonight. Renee and uh, Marshall, Lynn, welcome, welcome, welcome. They live right over there. Like next building. That's cool. 
So tomorrow night at 6 p.m., I'm going to do a watch party for the International Faith Conference. And for those of you who aren't in church <laughs> or doing something else important, come and be with us because I really want to test this watch party thing out um, and see how it works. You guys probably do it all the time and can tell me. I don't know because I don't ever do one. But tomorrow night I'm going to do it right here on the Community of Faith and on my personal site so that I can see how it works. And I want you to hear this message this man's going to preach. There'll be some good singing and shouting and jumping. And then there'll be an offering. And then, the, and then he'll preach the word. And it'll be a great time. You're, you're going to enjoy yourself. It starts at 6 p.m. Central. Sunday, 13 September. So make sure you put that down. Write a note to yourself right now. And... I want you guys to come out and be a part of the watch party. What I want to see is if you and I can talk back and forth with each other, Wyatt, because there's probably going to be about 80,000 people streaming on this, on this message tomorrow night. Sometimes the comments go <laughs> kind of like, yeah, just going. And I want to see if our watch party lets us be able to talk on the side. But anyways, you're going to love the message. And uh, we'll do that tomorrow night. At tomorrow at 11 a.m. here at our in our apartment, we're going to have some people over for a Bible study. So, all y'all that's close enough, you know, come on out, brother Mike. You drive all over the nation. Just show up here tomorrow. <laughs> it's a good thing, and it'll be a it'll be a powerful blessing. We've been on the glory of the Lord all week long, and we've been we've been talking about how God's presence gets in us and manifests out, and then it begins to change everything. I encourage every single one of you to begin to say every day, Lord, bring somebody to me. Every one of you just say it. Lord, bring somebody to me that I can encourage in the Lord. Now, you might look at us and say, Pastor, I ain't doing what you do. No, you don't have to do what I do. You got me to do it right here. But I encourage you to start blessing people. Find the website, samueljcoddle.com, get that communion prayer up, and as soon as somebody comes in your house that needs God, just say, hey, why don't you sit down and take communion with me? God will lead you in it. And um, I'm going to tell you, what's going to happen is all of a sudden, God's going to begin to build a group of people who love you and who receive from you, and they're going to say, I need you to be in my life. Look at there. Someone else landed in my lap today. Well, hopefully they didn't hurt you. Amen. God, everybody say God. But... Thank you, Christine Barkley. That's awesome. All right, what else we got? Oh, I got to show you this. <laughs> I got to show you my shirt here. This says, pray for our country. All right? For those of you that were on the other night, see if I can get my cross right. Those of you that were on the other night, Brother Jimmy Roja was on, and Brother Jimmy is um, uh, doing a, a Believer's Challenge. And this is the shirt that he gives out for the Believer's Challenge that says pray for our country. Now, he got on there the other night and he said, he said, I'm sending you some t-shirts. Well, guess what? They showed up today. And here's, here's the deal. Go to hashtag believers challenge and see what he does. Um, I'm, how, do you know how many we got? We got like maybe 10 or 12. And um, we'll share them with you. But if you get on there and do that with him, he'll get you one of these shirts if you'll wear it. All right? Pray for our country. And it's called Hashtag Believer's Challenge. Now, I haven't been plugging our Believer's Challenge all week. And I apologize about that, Gwen. And keep the fire under me so that I keep it out there because it's an important challenge that we got to make happen. And that is this. Number one, love your neighbor. As yourself, Jesus said, by your love, they'll know you. 
So do good, do ten, do good to ten people a month. Find ten people to be a blessing to. I we're well, we are already well past our ten mark. But here's the reality: it don't matter to me. I'm gonna be good to every person that God tells me to be good to every day, no matter how many it is a month. And can you imagine the day when you just get to be good to somebody every single day? Amen. You know, it's like you pull up and get a coffee and you give the young lady a hundred dollar bill for a tip. Woo! I'm ready for it, Jesus. I am your checkbook. Fill me up so I can be a blessing to people. Now, here's the reality. What does God ask you to give? Remember this. He asks you to give of your time. He asks you to give of your talent. And he asks you to give of your treasure. Somebody type those three things in in one note. Time, talent, and treasure. What does that mean, Pastor? That means that there's some days he's going to say, spend some time with that person. There's other days he's going to say, bless that person with a $10 bill or something. There's other times he's going to say, Get your expertise and get involved and help that person get this done. You know what's cool? I'm not the one in charge of it. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. God's in charge and he knows what to tell you to do. And there'll be people right there around you that you'll be a blessing to. Now, here's the cool thing about it. You'll be a blessing and they'll have this look on their face like, wow, did you just do that for me? And you know what? will say, yeah, I just did it for you. Ready? What did we find today? What did we get on our um, rental car? Oh, $140. All right. Watch this. Yes, but it was supposed to be. And it was a free now watch this. You guys, you hear me talk about the Believer's Challenge. Thank you, Angel. That's good. You guys hear me talk about the Believer's Challenge, all right? So number one, it's, it's love your neighbor as yourself. Number two, it's pray for the nation 10 minutes a day, all right? So you and I do that with no trouble here. Number three, it's pay your tithe. And the purpose of this one with pay your tithe is to look at God and say, we prove you now in this. Now watch this. When we came to Michigan, we rented a car through Enterprise because... Got too many miles on little scoot out here. And man, we needed something there. Now watch this. We show up to pick the car up. The guy behind the counter says, uh, would you like an upgrade, a free upgrade? I'm like, uh, yeah. He goes, um, I don't have the car you had ready, and I would like to give you a free upgrade. So we were going to drive in a Ford Focus to do everything we just did. Lord have mercy on our soul. <laughs> or this Nissan Pathfinder. So the Nissan Pathfinder is a nicer vehicle, larger vehicle. It made it a very, very comfortable trip for us. Very comfortable trip. And even little ripples. Now, watch this. We get back and I, I, uh, I, I clean the car all up as if it was my own. Okay? I go in and I say to him, I said, well, I, I took a little extra time cleaning. He goes, oh, man, you don't have to clean the car. I'm like, yeah, but I want to be your best customer ever. He goes, if you clean the car every time you bring it back, you will be the best customer ever. All right? So we, the money clears today. It goes through the bank. We saved $147. From what it was originally supposed to be and had a free upgrade. $147. Now, I Gwen says it. I like God's math. I like God's math. How does that happen? Pastor, I don't know. I really don't care. Listen, you know what I was expecting? I was expecting to get the whole thing for free. So I got to work my faith a little better. <laughs> now now here's here's what i want you guys to do 
I want you to begin to keep your eyes open for this God money situation happening. And when you get a story where God really blesses you financially, send it to us and help us see it. Because it helps all of us have confidence in God when we can see the story that everybody else is telling. Now, I don't want people to know your personal business. If you send me the story, I'll take the names out like Dragnet and change the names to protect the innocent. All right. But what does it do? It tells a story and blesses everybody else that's here. So if you have some of them stories and you don't mind me telling them, shoot me a message and say, make sure you tell this one. And if you've already told it to me, then I'll bring it here and tell it because God's math is the best math. How does that happen like that? I don't even know how to tell you. How'd they come up with $147? That don't even make sense. We don't know how that works, but thank you, Lord. And may we get a refund of all of it because Enterprise needed to sow a seed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, I, uh, Lord have mercy. I, Hold on. All right. Yes, love. Oh. Now, that's the believer's challenge. Here's what your part is in that. You find a post or you find a verse of scripture that matches one of those three things. Put the hashtag believer's challenge and then put the verse underneath it. If this hashtag thing's got you confused, Watch what some of these people do tonight, and they'll put some hashtags in with what we're teaching, and you'll be able to see how to do it. Because the more of these hashtags, Believer Challenge, you send out there on your Facebook page, it just spreads across the internet, and then we just keep taking over with these hashtags and putting them in places where the devil can't stop it. He thought he created it for his folks. He created it for us. And you and I get to preach the gospel and be a blessing to people in Jesus' mighty name. Did that make sense? I talked around the big old long circle there. Did it make sense? All right. That's cool. All right. Anybody else got something we do? All right, Sister Gwen. <laughs> My school loan went down over $2,000 between last month and this month's statement. Dollars when I made a hundred and sixty dollar payment. I love heaven's math. Pastor, how do they get this to happen? You put your tithe into the storehouse and you say, I prove you now in this Lord. He told you to say it, and when you said it, then he gets involved and does things that ain't nobody can see. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody do me like Jesus. Amen. There you go. Rebecca put one in. Admit it, you did it. That was a good one. I like that one today. Now, see, that makes sense. All of a sudden, you'll find yourself completely out of debt, and you'll just be sitting there going, how did we get out of debt? And God said, you're a tither, and I rebuke the devourer on every corner for you, and I'm going to wipe out this stuff for you like you've never seen. Let me give you a testimony. All right, Brother Mike, I'm off announcements now, and I'm into preaching. <laughs> I don't want that timer to keep rolling. <laughs> It's the glory of the Lord. <clears throat> but watch this. Uh, Dr. Winston <coughs> had been saying, speak to the mountain. One of the young men in the church had been speaking to his debt to be disappeared. And after one of the services on a Sunday or something, I don't, I don't remember the, the total details, you'll hear him tell the story. So believe the story. I'm just going to get you the highlights. So the young man says to his wife, I believe God wants us to go buy a car today. And she said, all right. 
and they went down to the to the dealership and they walked around and they found the car they wanted and it was the car on the sales floor inside the dealership and they sat down with the salesman and he started to look at their stuff and he just looked at him and said um i'm sorry there's just no way you can buy that car you have horrible credit and the young man said thank you sir he got his wife they went out into the foyer you know into the the center of where the the dealership where the car was and they began to walk around the car praying in the holy ghost saying now god i've had my faith that every debt was paid and uh, that man just said i don't get the car and you're the one that told me to come down here today and he just walked around praying in the holy ghost just saying what do i do what do i do what do i do and the holy spirit said go back in and tell him to run the numbers again so and he goes to the guy's office and said sir I really, 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 really want you to check those numbers again. He goes, well, I just checked the numbers. He goes, no, I want you to check the numbers again. Now watch this. The guy starts typing his social security number and he goes, well, there's something wrong here. He goes, what did you see? He goes, well, you, you don't have any debt on your name anywhere. You can buy that car. From when that man sat down at that desk the first time to when he went out and lapped that car and prayed in the spirit, God wiped out every debt that he had off of the books. I know I'm letting it be quiet on purpose. Why? Because because you got to look and say, wait, 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 Jesus. What are you trying to do for me? What are you trying to do for me? Because he's trying to do something for you right now. And it is, it is one of the most important things you'll ever come to the understanding of. And that is the tithe. Now watch this. Because this is part of my teaching. Now watch this. Your tithe might be 10 bucks this week put it in if you go to a church that won't receive your 10 bucks go to a different church god doesn't care i i've been telling brother tan beer no wait not telling i've got my faith with brother tan beer that some of those people that's part of his church will start tithing rice and they'll bring him 18 kernels of rice or something It'll be their tithe. Why? Because God honors tithe if it's nothing more than a couple pieces of rice. God honors tithe and rebukes the devourer all the way around you. Now, all of a sudden, something can happen that goes way beyond it. Can you imagine being faithful with your tithe and all your tithe is a month is, you know, a hundred bucks and God wipes out ten thousand dollars worth of debt with you bringing in your tithe into the storehouse because see it's not about the money it's about the worship of almighty god and trust in him and his system that it really works now just don't unpin that Gwen. i'll get it just a second brother jesse made a statement this week that i thought was just amazing he said don't just bind lack and debt show it the door and i thought what does he mean? He said, when you bind debt, show it your tithe record. Because see, that guarantees that you bind it. That tithe guarantees debt's paid in full. But next time you bind it, show it the, the last seed you sowed, whether it was your time, your talent, or your treasure. Just say, see it right there? guarantees you're gone out the door and off it has to go see this isn't about million billion and being rich fat snazzy nudie baganumina it's not about that it's about will you walk with god and let him do for you what he wants to do in his in your life i'm serious we got a good foundation here and now in every one of your lives you're going to be healed in your body you're going to be sound in your mind and you're going to be debt-free because that's what I'm going after next 
by the assignment of Almighty God. Say it. Healed in my body, sound in my mind, and debt free. In Jesus' mighty name. You know what happens when you're debt free? You can sleep a lot different because you don't have to worry about anything. And it don't matter. God does all kinds of amazing things, and he's doing it right now in the middle of this pandemic. I, I like the stories of the of Jesse Duplantis and Brother Copeland, and who was the other one? Jerry Savell. They didn't lay off one person in the whole COVID thing. All of them gave their employees a 10% raise, and they've had greater funds come to them than ever before. Why? Because in this time when the enemy's punching, and they just say, oh, yeah, watch this, bam, and they sowed a seed. The other one was Creflo. Creflo said the same thing. All of them did it. Matter of fact, here's how powerful this is. For the first time in the history of the Southwest Believers Convention, those five men paid off the whole budget for Brother Copeland before it ever started. Five ministries, a million and a half dollar budget. Why? Because they decided they're going to do something over and above, and you can't stop God once he rebukes the devourer around your life. Uh-oh, here goes Aunt Terry. I've been on four days a week since the end of March because of COVID and thinking, oh, this is not going to be good money-wise. Next week, back to five days, and all has been just fine. Thank you, God. <laughs> we give Aunt Terry a high five. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I got to read Gwen's statement because I got to get to my second verse because my first one was found in Malachi. Mike didn't start the timer for me yet, but you know. I got to the PowerPoint to work right yesterday. I'll post it to the COF page and we'll be sending it to local churches tomorrow. If others want to send it to churches in their area, they may do that. That's awesome. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you. And my goodness, we, we, we have sold our time and our talent on that situation. Oh my goodness. We're <laughs> well, maybe let's say it differently. We sold our time and lack of talent toward it. But look at she got it done only two months late. Hallelujah. <laughs> High five to Sister Gwen. She's an overcomer. That's why we love you, sis. That's why we love you. <laughs> I know there was three nights that Leanne and I sat right here at this desk and said, that's it. We're going to bed. Turn the computer off. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Look at the stories. Sister Gwen, we got a story. Aunt Terry's got a story. That's awesome. Did somebody else put anything in there? Wait till Trey is able to talk about the doors God opened for him. Hallelujah. How's the whole, uh, how's this whole health thing in the, in the mighty name of Jesus? Yeah, but you know what you said, Gwen? You're a self-fulfilling prophet. You prophesied your own help. You said, I am the queen of the go-around, and you did it. I've always said that I am the master of solving your situation that ain't like it's supposed to be done. Wait, I'm still the master. Well, you get up. I get up. It got really cold. I need no howl. Here we go. God bless technology. Does anybody know where we are? Mike, what was the second verse in my outline tonight? <laughs> what a time we're having tonight. Here we go. We're going to go now to Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. Exodus 33, 19. And we just getting started at, at you know, at 9 o'clock at night. 
And um, I'm going to tell you right now, the word that God's given us is an amazing word. Get to the first one first. No, no, no. I started on the first one. It was Malachi chapter 3. <laughs> Still haven't been able to see the specialist to get rechecked but not having more issues from overworking than anything else. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We received that healing and blessing in our brother's life in the mighty name of Jesus. Exodus chapter 33 and uh, verse number 19. When you get there, hold your Bible up. I can't see it back row. Put your Bible in the air. <laughs> get the back pewers going. Hey, man, anybody seen Brother Chris tonight? Chris Davis here? Chris Davis, where are you, man? Marshall Lynn, welcome. It's good to have you with us. Vamala, oh, Vamala's back. Hallelujah. Glad to have you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Here we go. Hold your Bible up. Let's make our confession. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. I am what it says I am. I go do what it tells me to do. Today, I will be taught the word of God, and it will change my life because that's what it's designed to do. I receive it as a seed that is producing a hundredfold and more in my life in Jesus mighty name amen and amen amen brother that's that's awesome that's awesome and just remember whatever you sow you do get to reap <laughs> so however much you sow <coughs> the next time you're on just think you get to reap it it's amazing principle of god Watch this, Exodus 33, verse 9, well, let's go to 18 and 19. And he said, please show me your glory. 19, he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now watch this. Say this with me. Show me your glory, Lord. Show me your glory, Lord. Now watch, God said to Moses, all right, I will. I will make all my goodness come before you. Can you imagine? All of God's goodness went before Moses. Whew. When you and I are born again, what does God show us? All of his goodness. What does he give us? All of his goodness. In one prayer. The rest of our life we spend renewing our mind, putting the word in our heart so we can get a revelation of just how good God actually is in our life. I really want to get those words in there. Can I get them in? Pray for our country. Pray for our country. Look at that. If I, if I can just hold still now. Everybody think I can hold still? Sit up straight. <laughs> she just told me to sit up straight. Can you believe that? <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to see this. There we go. There you go. Now that really looks good, doesn't it? Looks like a professional, doesn't it? I like that pray for our country. 
Uh, yeah, we got to unpin that comment now that we got it there. Because that makes it so some phones you can't see any comments when it's pinned. And eat your veggies. Amen. Now, watch this. God said to Moses, I'm going to bring all my goodness and it's going to pass before you. And I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now, I want you to see something. Go with me now to Exodus chapter 24. Exodus 24. Watch this. I want you to see this. Up till Exodus 24, God was giving them some laws, was teaching them things about their servants and different things. And uh, they start out in chapter 19. They're at Mount Sinai. Chapter 20, they get the Ten Commandments. Hey, bless you, Vamala. Love you. We love you and, and Julian. God bless you guys. Tell everybody at church that America says hi. The community of faith says high five to our friends in Malaysia. Now watch. 19, they get to Sinai. Now just get your Bible open and follow me in this. If, if some of you are fast typers and you want to type it in, then welcome. I, I appreciate that. Chapter 19, they arrive at Mount Sinai. Chapter 20, they get the Ten Commandments, all right? Which is all the things that God said, do not do, and do not do, and do, and do not do, and do, all right? Now look at verse 18, um, Exodus 20, 18. All the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightnings, the flashing, the sound of the trumpet, the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off the mountain. They said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear. But let God speak, but let not God speak with us because we'll die. You know why they felt that way? Because they had sin in their life. That's why they felt like that. Because they were still under the sin curse. And there was nothing they could do. That's just how it was. And they had to have animal sacrifice. And the priest had to shake it and do it and burn it and drip it and all that stuff he had to do. And verse 20, 2020, Exodus 2020. Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. And the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. Now, Sinai, no, Horeb was where God was when he met Moses. Moses was doing his best to get the people back to the mountain where he met God. And that's what God wanted. So 21 is laws. 22 is laws. 23 is laws. 24 Israel says, we're going to obey all the laws you give us. Now, go down to verse number 9. Watch this. Then Moses went up. Also Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel. God said, come up to the mountain. And they saw the God of Israel. Isn't that something? Say it with me. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you, Lord. These people are still under the curse of sin, guys. And they saw the God of Israel. Look at what it says. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone. And it was like the very heavens in its clarity. This is Moses, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders. Let's say it. They're up on the mountain. But guess where the rest of the people are? They're down in the plains 
shaking in their sandals because of what's going on up there. Now, just follow me because I'm going somewhere very important tonight. We're now going to read verse 10 through 18. Exodus 24, 10 through 18. Just read it with me. Verse 11. The nobles of the children of Israel, he did not lay his hand. So they saw God and they ate and drank. Then the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and be there. And I will give you tablets of stone and the law and the commandments, which I have written that you may teach them. Now, so the Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 are up this far, and God's there. And then what's God say? Moses, you come with me. <laughs> you got to know Moses is like, oh, Jesus, here we go. Watch. 13. So Moses arose with his servant Joshua. Always have a good leader that needs a good servant. Right? Because you get to go special places with them. Watch this. And Moses went up the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, wait for us until we come back to you. Indeed, Aaron and her are with you. If any man has a difficulty, let him go to them. Then Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain. Well, guess what? We're in verse number um, 15. Uh, Exodus 24, 15. Look at 16. The glory of the Lord rested on the mountain and the cloud covered it six days. They are in the glory for six days. Somebody say, somebody say pickled. <laughs> huh? Saturated. Pickled and saturated in the glory for six days. Now keep reading. I'm in verse 16. Thank you, Shannon. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the mist cloud. They're in the glory and God's not even said anything for six days. I would imagine when you get in that level of glory, you, you lose all track of time. Can you imagine? <clears throat> The sight of the glory of the Lord was a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Guess who else was there? 40 days and 40 nights. Joshua. He's with him. Come on. Can you imagine Josh? His eyes are this big around, man. Moses is used to God talking to him like this. So let's go. Verse 25, or chapter 25. This is what happens when they're in the cloud for 25 days, or 40 days. The offerings for the sanctuary. The ark of the testimony. The table for the showbread. God's showing them all this. The golden lampstand. Chapter 26. The tabernacle. God is telling Moses what to do. 27. The altar of burnt offering. God's telling Moses what he wants him to do. The court of the tabernacle. The care of the lampstand. 28, the garments for the priest, the ephod, the breastplate, and the other priestly garments. That's 20, 28. 29, Aaron and his sons are to be consecrated as the priest. Now watch. 29 also has the daily offerings. 30, the altar of incense, ransom money, the bronze labor, the holy anointing oil, 
and the incense. 31. The people who will build the tabernacle. There was a special group of people. Bezalel was anointed by God to build that tabernacle. And then the Sabbath law, where God said, six days shall you labor and the seventh you shall rest. Now, that took us from 25 through 31. Now watch this. This is 3118. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. Can you imagine? Here he comes. He's got two big old tablets of stone. Who knows? He's carrying one and Josh is carrying one. I don't know. Here they come down. And they got the law on these stones. Look what it says. Written with the finger of God. Do you know what the next chapter is? The next chapter is one of the goofiest chapters in the whole Bible. Look at verse 1. 32 1 when Mo when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain the people gathered together to Aaron and said to him come make us gods that shall go before us for as this Moses this man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt we don't even know what's become of him oh you guys did good don't worry about it Shannon you did good you, all you had to do was put those chapters in. Everything's cool. I We we were moving through a lot of Bible there, but I'm not going to stop and read it all. You read it. Watch this. These people in 40 days gave up on the glory they could see on top of the mountain. They could see the glory. And they said, well, we don't know what happened to Moses, so let's just make us a golden cow. And we'll bow down and worship it. Now, it don't matter what anybody offers. The only thing you ever want is the glory of the Lord. Now, oh, let's see. Let's go down here now to... Chapter 32, verse 7. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, get down, for your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. <laughs> God called them Moses' people. Moses is in the presence going, uh, Excuse me. I was a shepherd boy on the backside of the mountain when you spoke. Look at 10. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them and I can consume them. I will make of you a great nation. Verse 11, Moses said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people? You brought him out of the land of Egypt with a great power and a mighty hand. Moses is arguing with God about who's killing the people. You may have never seen this before. But all of this is happening with the glory of the Lord on top of the mountain. Now don't leave because we're going to a really good place here in a few minutes. Let's keep going. 14, Exodus 32, 14. So the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. Moses convinced God not to wipe them out. I want to tell you something. You and I can have much greater relationship than anything we've ever known. I was talking with Brother Mike today. He said he laid down and 
God said, what, we're not going to have no conversation? <clears throat> Mike, do you know how many great men of God I've heard say the same thing that, like that? Remember Dr. Summerall's story when the lady gave him the envelope of the offering and he, he needed money to get out into the into the into China and he's in his pocket and God said, uh, you're going to sleep? And he said, well, yes, I am. He said, but you got an envelope in your pocket. He said, I know. And 10 cents of Chinese money ain't going to get me anywhere that I need to go anyway. So why stay up and worry all night? And God said to him, you got an envelope in your pocket. And Brother Summerall says, well, I can see you're stuck on the envelope. So I know if I don't get out of bed, you're not going to leave me alone all night. And he went and got the envelope out. And in 1939 or whatever it was, he opened the envelope and there was $3,000 in $100 bills in an envelope in China that God blessed him with. Wait, if God says, hey, no talking tonight, just stay up. You never know what might be in that conversation. Amen? I want you to say this with me because I'm turning the corner here. I don't have to talk through Moses. Somebody might want to type it in. I don't have to talk to God through Pastor Sam. The children of Israel looked at Moses and said, you talk to God, we're going to talk to you. But you and me, we get to talk to God face to face. You guys could see it tonight. The glory was in this room. Wasn't that amazing? The glory was in this room. The glory of God. Now, I didn't see God's face. For goodness sakes alive, that glory, when it fills the room. You and I don't have to go through anybody to talk to God. Here's our challenge. Will we get quiet long enough that we'll stop talking and start listening? <laughs> Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Got a verse? Romans 8, 11. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of you, giving you life in your body. Now, I want you to see something. Let's keep reading here. <clears throat> We're in Exodus 32, verse 15. Moses turned and went down the mountain and he had the two tablets in his hand. God wrote on them again. All right? No, wait, this is the first two tablets. No, that's the second tablets. Who knows? I'm all off. Yeah, these are the first tablets. They were written on both sides, one to one side, one to the other. Verse 16. The tablets were the work of God. What a statement. The tablets were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets of stone. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said to Moses, there's the noise of war in the camp. He said, it's not the shout of victory, nor the noise of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing I hear. So it was, as soon as he came near the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger became so hot, he cast down the tablets and broke them at the foot of the mountain. 
Don't break anything God writes on. If you're going to set them down and whoop some Israelite tail, set them down gently so they don't break. Amen. Amen. Verse 20. He took the calf which they had made, burned it in the fire, ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made him drink it. And then he said to God, you don't have to worry about it, God. I'm killing them. <laughs> now, I want you to see something. How angry do you think our God was? That they could see the glory on the mountain. They could see the glory on the mountain. And they build a God and began to sing and dance and be drunken and according and according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 Paul said they sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play and he said many of them committed sexual immorality and Moses called the the children of Levi or said who's on the Lord's side come stand by me and they did, and he said, go in there and deal with the situation. And they killed 3,000 men of Israel that day. Wickedness. Now, why are we saying all this, Pastor Sam? Because all of this happened before God said to Moses, I will show you all my glory. I will make my name pass before you. I'm going to show you my grace and my mercy and my compassion. That happened after all of this. And that's when Moses carried up the second set of tablets to God. And God said, well, you got him up here. And now I'll write him on it again. And he wrote the Ten Commandments on it again. 3,000 people died that day. Now, you ready for tonight's revelation? Hebrews. Chapter 4. Somebody say, I love the word. I love the word. I love the word. I love the word. I'm telling you right now. Stiff-necked people. Amen. Belly be well. Not sure who that was, but. I want to rock hunt on the base of that mountain. Amen. Well, Gwen, whenever you go, Leanne and I are going with you and Dave. So pack up the van. Let's get started. Amen. Amen. We declare over your body, Christine, that it changes now. And the covenant is what happens in your body and the covenant is healthy, healed, and whole in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody in agreement, shout a very big amen. Amen. Now, I want you to see this. Let me, uh, let me do this. Hebrews chapter 4, that's where we're going. Did somebody put that in? Hebrews chapter chapter 4 Hebrews chapter 4 now watch this Hebrews chapter 4 starts with a therefore what do you do when you find a therefore find out what it's there for right however um we can't do all of chapters 1, 2, and 3. So God showed up, and then salvation showed up, and Jesus was faithful. Be faithful. Don't be failing in the wilderness like they did. Yes, Hebrews 4, verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear 
lest any of us should have come short of it. Remember, this is the new covenant now. Jesus has died. The price has been paid. The veil of the temple was rent in two. The access to the Holy of Holies happened. The blood of the new covenant, like we've been talking about in our communion elements since we did it, has happened. And now you and I have an open door into the Holy of Holies like Moses when he went up on that mountain. Now watch this. Verse 2. Hebrews 4, 2. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. Bless you, Christine. We love you. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Just ask the question like me. Well, what did they do that didn't profit them? Because I'm telling you right now, the word is profiting us. We're getting great profit from the word. If your house isn't, you stay connected to us, and you keep listening to this word and studying this word and putting it down in, and it'll begin to work. But God's blessing is here on us and on our house right here. Now watch why. The word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. How was it mixed in faith? Joshua would go to the tent of meeting with Moses, and he wouldn't leave. Caleb somehow made it. All of their tribes made it. Why? Because God said, go in and take the land. And them two boys said, well, we saw the land, and we're taking us and our folks in, and all y'all thumb suckers can die out there in the wilderness because we're going into the promised land. And the ones who refused to stand in faith did not make it in, and they died in the wilderness. This is where many Pentecostal sermons take the wrong twist. And all of you are going to die in the wilderness if you don't do right. No. 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 Brother Mike said it. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead showed him what to do with the disciples, and then raised him to heaven, is on the inside of you. You can't fail. You can't fail. Well, I got a word for you. If you get focused on failing, you're going to fail. If you get focused on fear, what are you going to do? Fear. If you get focused on the exceeding abundantly above all God, all you can ask or think, what are you going to get? The exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Why? Because it's in your hands what you do with the word of God. Now look at verse 2 again. Why did it not profit them? Because they did not mix it with faith. You ready? Here's how you mix it with faith. <clears throat> Go with me to verse number 15. Hebrews, yeah, <laughs> there goes Mike. <laughs> He's preaching already. <laughs> All right, brother, if you got to call in to get it off, your mind, that's fine. You can do that. We'll let you. But um, you can't take over all my preaching time tonight. <laughs> Watch this. Hebrews 4. Let's go down 14 through 16. And then we'll grab Mike's Philippians 4, 8. That's a great verse. And Tisha's statement. Give me my Mountain, that's how you mix it with faith. You ready? Here's how you mix this word with faith. Every debt I have paid in full. 
Somebody type it in. Every debt I have paid in full. That's how you take this word I teach you and mix it with faith. And now the word comes alive on the inside of you. You, you put your tithe in the offering bucket or envelope or whatever you're doing now. Everybody's doing something wild different. When you do that, you make a statement. I am proving you now in this. What did you just do? You took this word, you obeyed it, you mixed it with faith, and then God gets involved. I'm going to tell you, debts are going to be paid really quick Amen. in this community of faith right here. Amen. You watch how fast God gets this group out of debt. Including us. We got debt. But I'm going to tell you something. We ain't getting no more debt. My father is the um, grandest force in all the universes. Like he wants you bound in debt. The borrower is servant to the lender. Well, that ain't God. God said, I want you to lend to many nations and not borrow. Yeah, but brother, Dr. Reverend Pastor, you can't say that. I didn't. He said it. Can you imagine if we can lend to Brother Tim here right now? We can make an amazing difference. But you got to have it to lend it. Everybody say, mix it with faith. Am, am, I, am I all right? Am I doing good? All right. Verse 14. Thank you, Shannon. You're doing a good job of keeping up. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, what is his name? Just waiting. People got to be able to type. We have a great high priest. What is his name? Jesus, the son of God. It's right in the verse. <laughs> Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Now those two verses set up where I want you to be tonight. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. There's a throne called grace. And God Almighty said, come boldly to it. That you may obtain mercy. Find grace. And help in the time of your need. You ready? What's mercy? Not getting what you do deserve. What's grace? Getting what you don't deserve. And what's help? The Holy Spirit of God. Romans 8, 11, Brother Mike's verse he just threw in there. Say this with me. I got to come boldly to the throne of grace. Let's read Tish's statement. We already paid off one credit card getting ready to pay off another in a couple weeks and should have another paid off in a month or so. I told you, Trey had some open doors, right? Hallelujah. Now wait, in this one night, we heard $147 that we, did, that we saved on our rental car. Gwen had $2,000 knocked off of, her, off of a loan. And Sister Tisha is now at the point of paying off the third credit card. Somebody ought to shout somebody. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Now watch this. God, the Holy Spirit, inspired this book 
And he said, come boldly to the throne. Now you and I have a high priest. His name is Jesus. He already entered into the holy place. Write these verses down. Hebrews chapter 9. Write these verses. Hebrews 9. I'm not going to preach it, but Hebrews 9 verse um, 11 through 15. Jesus already went once and for all, put blood on the holy place. And that opened up the door. Remember when he said it is finished and the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom? That veil was the veil that kept the secret place, the holy place, where only the high priest could go one time a year. And when Jesus said it is finished, the big old angels ripped, maybe God, ripped that veil from the top to the bottom and said, all y'all look here. You get to come before me yourself. See, in the Old Testament, only I got to talk to God, and you had to listen. But in the New Testament, let's go to Mike's verse. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, watch this. I could preach for three more hours right now. But I can't because we got to get up. I want every one of you to be so bold. You know what? I've been on the wrong page. Anybody sign in I needed to see? Just checking a few comments here. All right. Wait, I haven't put any of these in lately, so I'll just give you a couple of those real quick while I'm here. There you go. Put a laughing face and an amen, hallelujah, and a couple hugs. There you go. Now watch. Look at look at Philippians 4 8. Finally, brethren. Paul's another one of them. Finally. No. <laughs> I said all of that, now I'm going to say this. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things or meditate on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received. Now watch this. And heard and seen in us. Do. And the God of peace will be with you. We are an example of of whatsoever things are noble, just, pure, lovely, and a good report. We're not, listen, we are not the standard. We're the example. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. We are not the standard. We're the example. But every one of us can go into that throne room of God and say, I want to know you more. That's why these songs meant so much to all of us tonight, because this is where God was going on this. Look at this, Christine Barkley. We don't have any debt anymore, praise God. Also, we recently received a refund check from the car insurance, which was odd, but I just praised God and said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we still have the old car we bought in April of 2019, for only $300, and yes, it's still running great. Now, see, there's a testimony right there. This is what all of us have to hear. Now, this is what I say. Jesus, bring them a new car. Would anybody agree with me? Bring them a new Amen. car. I can hear some other people. Oh, Pastor, can I get one of them too? Oh, yeah. Wait, hey, Mike, don't let me forget your verses. I got to show them a verse. 
I'll be back. I got to show everybody a verse. Because people don't actually believe it's in the Bible. Hold on. Hold on. Everybody be patient. Quit being such an, in such a hurry. <laughs> Revelation. Hold on. Hold on. Ready to go. All right. Well, God said, I make all things new. It's 21. There it is, 21.5. Amen. We got two in agreement with you, Christine and Rebecca. You get a new car. Come on, man. Why? The, wait. It is nothing more than asking the Father who loves you greater than anything. Anyone has ever loved you. Look at what 21.5 says. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, right, for these words are true and faithful. Well, what are you going to do? Look at Jesus and say, no, don't give me something new. Remember what we were at last night in Deuteronomy and Joshua? Deuteronomy 6 Moses is saying, you're going to go in and have cities you didn't build. Joshua chapter 24, Joshua says, you are now living in cities you did not build. Now watch this. God wants to bless and care for his children. Look at what Brother Mike put in front of us. The thing you got to always say is, is it noble? Is it just? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it of a good report? Does it have any virtue? Does it have any praise? Think on these things and move in that direction. Well, of course, that's always going to be the throne room of God. When you come to the throne room of God, do you come in on your knees? Oh, Lord. I'm such a worm. If you could please have mercy on me. No matter how much you shake your voice, God don't listen any better. He don't. I, I love listening to Brother Jesse talk about his conversations with God. You know why? Because that's the kind of conversation I have with God. Hey, God, what's up, Sam? Uh, what about this? Uh, yeah, when we're going to do that over there. Oh, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Did you just say that to me? <laughs> I, I was out here driving one time, and he's like, get that for me. I'm like, hello. You know how much money that is? Yes, sir. No matter what he says to you, say, yes, sir. Wait, Christine Barkley, we declare in the name of Jesus a new car for each of you and a spacious peaceful home. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think is what he said he is doing for you. I don't know. I might have got everybody fired up. We might have to let Mike talk. Let me see. Is he called in? No. Brother Tim's on the phone. I bet Tim could preach something tonight. Oh. Wait, wait, everybody, wait. Wait. Brother Tim, you on the way there or the way home? Brother Tim, are you on the way there or the way home? Hey, hey, Brother Tim. We know we're talking to him. Hey, Brother Tim, come on the phone. Nope. 
wants to get out of the car and get in gas. Now, come on, Mike. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, come on. You guys, come on, preach. Sister Sweeney has not preached much tonight. Dr. Reverend, there needs to be a little more preaching out of you. She might be busy. All right, no judgment whatsoever. <laughs> she's probably out looking at the stars or finding them amazing rocks she's got. A new car for each of us. And it's, 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 oh, my goodness. A peaceful, oh, Jesus. Spacious, peaceful home. Mike Tony, when you do this, you eliminate limits. Whew. You stop unintentionally worshiping the mountain and giving it power. He's preaching tonight, isn't he? Amen, Sister Loretta. I prefer conversations with God, even if I'm the only one I hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Shannon, we'll let you go. So if you just fall asleep, just don't tell anybody that I put you to sleep with my preaching. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good night, Shannon. We love you. Now, where where did uh where wait where to go? Tisha, get out of the box. I've said this to you guys since we come here. Turn your box upside down, make a platform out of it. Now you got a whole new view. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hold on just a second. Now, um, oh, wait, Brother Tim said he's trying. Hold on just a second. All right, we're here, brother. If you can start preaching, just go at it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, hold on, hold on just a second. <laughs> we got another guy preaching. Go ahead. The Lord is great. He greatly to be praised. <laughs> Don't hold it back. Don't hold it back. The keys to the kingdom. Come on, man. Preach. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. <laughs> Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. If any two of you agree as to touching anything, it shall be done for them. Matthew 18 verses 18, 19, and 20. Look it up. Amen. You want to know how to unlock it? God said through Jesus, these are the keys to the kingdom. Matthew 18, 18, 19, 19 and 20. I'm getting ready to go back to another valley, so the phone's going to cut off here in a second. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you too, Tim. Have Thanks for preaching, man. Yeah. <laughs> Now listen, that that's what Blog Talk Radio does for us. Some of you are going to get a little more bold and come on here like our brothers do and our sister. Hey, Gwen, I was just giving you a hard time. I wasn't really being nasty. Make me feel bad now. <laughs> now, wait, wait, let's think, think about it. Oh, Jesus, Lord have mercy. Get your tongue together. I did all of that stuff in the Old Testament because you and I got to see we're in a different position than those people were. You might think, thank you, Gwen. You might think that you have lived a life that doesn't deserve all of this blessing of God, but that's not true. Worse yet is if you feel like you've been so religious that it's just what God owes you no matter what. Hurry up and get it here. Now you on the other side of the picture. One person has not enough self-esteem. The other person has too much self-esteem. Wait, 
Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Come in boldly to that throne room and realize the only way you get in there is the righteousness of God, which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. <laughs> Just wait. Listen, don't mess with a sister and don't mess with one with the power to pin you. Because <laughs> you might walk out of the house with a donkey tail where you didn't want it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. No, come on, let's, let's. <laughs> yeah, we love you, Gwen. <clears throat> No, because see, here's our thing. Every night in communion, we say, I come boldly to the throne room of grace. Look at what it says. Wait, where's that at? Hebrews chapter four. Now, Mike, if I didn't preach Philippians chapter four good enough for you, well, then call in and preach it like you want it preached. And wait, wait. And. And Gwen, if he doesn't do a good enough job, you come back and preach it after he's done. <laughs> now watch. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Look at this verse very closely. Man, we got a bunch of people on with us tonight. Hold on just a second. Jeff Tomlin's been on here with us. Hey, yeah, came back. All right. Aunt Terry, Gwen, Tisha, Christine, and Mike. All right. Those are the ones I can see. The rest of you, click that screen on the video over there on my personal page so you can come over here and make some comments because we want to know who you are and we want to be a blessing to you. It gives us something that gives us the ability to pray for you, and that way we know you are with us tonight. And if my friend Jeff's here, brother, I believe you're supposed to do the same thing we're doing in your place. And I got some good tips if you want them. Not what to preach. Um, how I'm making this happen like it is and adding blog talk radio with it. I got some good good ideas, but it's I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Just God's telling you to do it, so get your act together. <laughs> Hebrews. <laughs> He, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Now watch this. What's amazing to me is stand in a handful. Just a handful of verses and nothing can stop you. Yeah, that's right. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, see, I'm going to I'm gonna continually give you verses. I thank you, Mike, because you kind of turned the corner on that with me. You got to grab some verses that mean something to you. You do. And then get them verses down and stay on them until they get registered down deep inside your heart. You do. Get some verses and then just speak them out loud, out loud, out loud, out loud, out loud, out loud, out loud. And it forces them down inside and forces out the junk the world taught you. And there'll be days the Father will ask you the same question 37 times in one day. And you'll be like, um, what are you trying to tell me today? And it won't matter what he's trying to tell you because you're going to stay at it till you get it. Now watch. I got to get this verse in here. 16. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly do not go into the throne room of God in fear don't go in crying don't go in begging don't go in demanding come in boldly like an ambassador sitting down at a table with the president who appointed you to that position it's so much greater you're an ambassador of heaven and God Almighty is the one you're talking to. And Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is on the throne beside him, giving us instruction, giving us assignments to go and do and be. 
Now watch this. Come boldly to the throne of grace. You're going to the place of something you don't even deserve. But he gave you his righteousness. So when you come there, come into his throne room with Jesus' righteousness. That's what gives you access. And when you walk in with his righteousness, you can walk in with the greatest confidence and boldness you have ever seen and you have ever experienced in your life. What's going to happen next? You are going to obtain mercy, which is not receiving what you do deserve, and grace to help in the time of need. You know what it is? Watch this. The throne. That's in heaven. That's Jesus. He's sitting on it. Grace is Jesus. Mercy is the Father. Help is the Spirit. When you get to the throne, you get grace, Jesus, mercy, the Father, help, the Holy Spirit. Where do they live? On the inside of you. They're already there. Right now. Right now. Now, Mike just said one of the most powerful things, and that is this. Get you a set of verses that you're going to be stuck on, and you get them down inside of you until they register so deep it's the only thing you talk about. And people look at you and say, are you serious? Are you going to tell me those verses again? And you're going to say, yeah, you didn't get them the last time, so I most certainly am going to give them to you again. Yes. Because it's obvious that you need them. <laughs> Say it with me. I come boldly to the throne room of grace where I find grace, mercy, and help for my assignment every day. In the name of Jesus. Watch this. God is working on your behalf. If you stick with us. 90 seconds. Oh, well, there you go, Gwen. Was you paying attention? <laughs> you, got, you got your payback. Oh, that lady. Whew. Crazy British women anyway. They just interrupt everything you're saying. 90 seconds. All right. See, the children of Israel, they didn't want nothing to do with God. Moses, you talk to them and you come tell us what he said. But see, you and I, we get to go talk to God and then come back and get it done and watch. And then we come back in here and tell our stories like we've been telling tonight. Oh my, the power that's in this, the power that's in it. Think about it. We told the story, saved $147. Gwen told the story, saved $2,000, whatever it was, $1,800. Tish has told the story, paid off two credit cards. The third one's on the way. God's blessing. Rebecca and Christine said, they're not in debt. Hallelujah. And yet, what are they, what were they like? A car for each of them. Of course you would like that. Think about Jesus. He said to the disciples, I need a donkey. Go get me that one. They went and got the donkey. And what happened? They got the donkey. <laughs> oh, hey, wait. Wait, Gwen. You might have missed it, but you can go back and see it again because it's still there. <laughs> it happened at about 2.53, okay? <laughs> 
No, come on, let's be bold. Let's not be arrogant. Let's be bold. Let's be bold. In slow mo. <laughs> and that one screen on there will let you go back that 15 seconds. Bam, woo, bam, woo, bam. <laughs> All right. It's time to pray and to be finished. Father, in the name of Jesus, you manifested your glory in so many different ways tonight. And we worship you for it, Lord. What an amazing body of believers, family, that you've established here. We love them all, Lord. Our, our new friend, Loretta. She doesn't say much, Lord, but we sure love her. Bless her. Our new friend. Donna, come by tonight. Brother Jeff. Brother Jamie, come by tonight. Doug Older came by tonight. Bless you, Doug. All of our friends that's here regularly. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We declare in ourselves, make us a blessing to someone today. You, make us a blessing to someone today. Now, our day's done. Most of us are going to sleep. But tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. And we declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every one of us will stand boldly and confidently in who you are in us and who we are in you. In Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for these testimonies. Father, you said that if we know you heard our prayers, we know we have the petition that we ask of you. I ask, Father, for every member of the community of faith to be debt free. I ask it. I know it's your will. I now speak to you, debt. Be removed immediately from these people's lives. I saw it as a seed this prayer, but I stand in the authority of Almighty God and his word that says, lend to many nations and not borrow, will be the lenders, not the borrowers. I speak it over this whole body. We speak it over everybody that's here. We speak it over the ones we don't know their names that are here, but we declare it over your life right now. And when it happens to you, bring us the testimony so we can all shout glory with you. Supernaturally, immediately, as it is right now. The woman with the, with the vial of oil in the Old Testament, out of debt that day, and enough to live on. And we thank you for it in the lives of each of these believers. We thoroughly expect it. Lord, help every one of us to be tithers. Help every one of us to get the revelation of this, that we just, we gotta get in here and, and worship you with our tithe. And then let you just wipe out that devourer in every area of our life and give us victory we have never seen or had before. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray amen and amen and amen. And if you're ready, somebody kick in the communion verses. And we'll go right from one gear to the next. And the big old truck I used to drive, that was just going out of out of 12 into 13 and rolling down the highway, kicking on the cruise, making them big pipes just sing. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23. Here we go. I'm having communion for those that's left with us. And uh, we're glad that you're with us. We truly are. Those of you that's on my other site over there, 
click the tab and come on over and join us in the comments. And it'll be a blessing unto you. Don't worry. 90 seconds is over. And if you all call in now, um, the volume is all the way down where it's supposed to be after somebody calls in. Good night, Mike. Love you, brother. May his favor be upon you. And a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children and your coming and your going and your rising and your sleeping in around you. It's everywhere. Aren't you glad I know the song? Ready? For I received from the Lord. I can see him, Rebecca. I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the cup. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and as often as you drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. Thank you, Rebecca. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged of the Lord. Hold on, just give me a second. Now this is what we do here. Come on. This is how we do it. We have read the verses, and now we say a prayer of salvation, a prayer of self-examination. Then we pray over the elements. We sanctify them for this time of communion. And then we lead you in a prayer uh, over the communion elements, a prayer of faith that is filled with the word of God. And that'll be a blessing to you. If you don't know Jesus, now's the time to pray the prayer you know him. If you already know him, now's the time to pray the prayer and solidify this in your life and rejoice that this is already done. And you have the righteousness of God. And you can pray this prayer very boldly and very confidently in Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready? Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I come to you tonight. I come to you tonight. I know I need Jesus. I know I need Jesus. In every area of my life. In every area of my life. In my spirit. In my spirit. In my soul. In my soul. And in my body. And in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. Nothing missing. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. What am I doing? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I didn't even catch 
that either. <laughs> Oh my goodness. For those of you that's with us on a regular <laughs> basis, that's not the prayer of salvation. <laughs> or self-examination. <laughs> Ready? Pray with me. According, right. according to John chapter 1. <laughs> according to John chapter 1. Well, do you want to go back and... <laughs> I receive you, Jesus. I receive you, Jesus. And you give me the power. And you give me the power. To become a child of to God. To become a child of God. According to John 3.16. According to John 3.16. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. And you give me eternal life. And you give me eternal life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy so Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word. Understand the Pray word. Pray in my heavenly prayer. Pray language. in my heavenly prayer language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every in day. Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Oh! Hallelujah. The glory, when it rests on you, it's a cool rest in you. I'm about to rest right here. <laughs> so, next thing we do is put in the email address, hgpreacherman at gmail.com. One of our uh, community of faith members, will, family, will put that in. And the website, which is samueljcoddle.com. That way you have the ability to know who we are, how to get in contact with us, so that we can be a blessing to you in Jesus' mighty name. If you got a story to tell, tell it. If you got a testimony, tell it. If you got born again tonight, let us know. We want to know. So that we can rejoice and shout glory with you and your family, however that is. Are you ready? Let's pray over the elements and bless them tonight. We just... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's just the glory of the lord i love yeah. it you ready pray this with me oh jesus father in jesus name father in jesus name i bless these elements i bless these elements and set them aside for this time of communion with you and set them aside for this time of communion with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus mighty Here we name. go. Come on. Jesus said for the joy that was set before him. Jesus said for the joy that was set before him. I'm just explaining. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Some people say don't laugh during communion. <laughs> But Jesus said for the joy that was set before him. And we've had so much glory tonight. This is natural. This is what happens. And so, now we're going to pray the prayer over the bread. You were wounded. You were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement. The chastisement. For my peace. For my peace. Is on you, Lord. Is on you, Lord. And by your stripes. And by your stripes. I am healed. I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. Nothing missing. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From the body of Christ. From the body of Christ. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's receive the bread together. Thank you, Lord. We seal this time together, right now, with your broken body. And we rejoice in you. Now we lift up the cup of blessing, the blood of Jesus. 
Pray this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my Father. With you, my Father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission. In my life. In my life. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. And all things have become new. And all things have become new. And I thank you for it. And I thank you. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The plague has to pass over. The plague has to pass over. And cannot be on me or my family. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come bold. I come boldly. To the throne room of grace. To the throne room of grace. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. For my assignment every day. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Is cast down. Is cast down. And there's no more condemnation. And there's no more condemnation. In my life. In my life. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. My conscience is purged. My conscience is My purged. robes made white. My robes made white. And I will always be. And I will always be. The glorious church. The glorious church. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's receive the juice together. We got one more song to sing. And if you go to my Facebook page afterward, um, Chris Ziegler, welcome, man. Hopefully you was able to receive communion with us. Wow. Good to have you. How's things going? Matter of fact, I just found your story last night again in a file. And I've been telling it. Told it just the other night. God bless you, man. God bless you. The story of the lady that escorted her daughter to the... Yeah. To Jesus. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Now, um, so it's good to have you. We're here every night, and we would love to have you come and be a part of it every night. Um, I'm not quite caught up on where you're at right now, but um, uh, we know this. We want you to be a part of what we're doing, if, it, if in any way you can. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. I'm looking for words. And I lost them. We know the words of this song. What is it? The blood of Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on Calvary The blood that gives me strength From day to day It will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood 
that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it soothes my doubts and calms my fears and it dries all my tears the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never its power it will never lose it will never lose it will never lose its power yeah good sign Now, here we go. We have a prayer we pray for everybody. It's our closing prayer. We pray every time we come here. So receive this prayer of blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Nope. That prayer didn't work. Let's try a different one. There it is. I hope that you've enjoyed this message today. <laughs> My prayer for your life and family is that since you're an heir of salvation, the angels of the Lord will minister to you every day of your life. I know that since you're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, you will remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power, whose power no, no foe fall. can withstand. I say he delivers you from the I snares and traps with which the enemy would try to stop you. I say the word will be your shield and buckler every day. You will not be afraid of anything. You may see thousands fall by your side, but it, but it will not come near you. Only, only a spectator, a spectator shall you be, shall yourself inaccessible in the secret place. No evil shall be you. No plague or calamity will come near your dwelling. For he will give his angels special charge over you to accompany, defend, and preserve you in all of your ways of obedience and service. I say so all these blessings, blessings will come on you and overtake you. You'll be blessed in the city, in the field, in the fruit of your body, in your work, 
and God shall increase you more and more. I say you're blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. I say the Lord shall cause your enemies that come out against you to flee in seven ways. You'll be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. And you will not turn aside from any of these words of the Lord. I thank the Lord for you. And I pray that he shall grant unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. I pray the eyes of your understanding be flooded with enlightenment so that you can understand your place in God and that you know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power to you as you believe. And as always, we want you to know that we love you. And God loves you. He has a he place for you in his kingdom. He is good. And his mercy endures forever. He endures forever and ever and ever. Well, that's our program tonight. Now we got a couple people that's just coming on by saying, hold on. You guys usually go for another 35 minutes. Well, We've changed our time because it um, makes it a lot more uh, enjoyable schedule. Good night, Rebecca. We love you. Thanks for all your help tonight. We love you and Christine. It's amazing what you do for us. Thank you so much. Um, so our schedule has changed, and um, we come on now at 8, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern time and uh, 7 Central. And that's in the evenings now, every night, because it makes it just, it makes it easier on absolutely every one of us. And it makes for a lot more enjoyable show. So, um, you know, unless, all, unless the God shows up and we get going on a topic and everybody stays, but everybody had to get up and go to do something tomorrow. So we call you all blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Phyllis Raymond, you are a blessing to us, man. You are a blessing. And we pray for the areas that's been affected. And we speak, God Almighty, deal with every politician that stands in the way of the help and the, and the blessing getting to these people. We speak this in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. May the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it be yours in Jesus name. And if you didn't hear us earlier, uh, we're going to have a special watch party tomorrow night from Dr. Bill Winston's faith conference. That's going to be tomorrow night about 6 p.m. Central. So if you want to join us, we'd love to have you with us. It's going to be a great message. Bishop Tudor Bismarck from um, Zimbabwe will be preaching. It'll be a great time. And we bless you, and we bless your family, and we bless your loved ones. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for making us a part of your life. Is that? Oh, in Jesus' name. Thank you for making us a part of your life, fellas. We really mean that. We really, really, really mean that. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, here we go. Seems like a short night, but I guess that's how it goes. This is what we say every time we come together and do this. Brother Tan Beer. God bless you, sir. How much time before you go live? What's amazing to me is that I can ask him a question like that. In the matter of a minute or two, I can have that answer sitting right here. Isn't that something? Don't you love technology? I, not right, not right now. All right. Well, we love technology here on the community of faith. Here we go. You ready? We say this every time we come here. We love you. God loves you. And Jesus is Lord.